Good morning. It is, I don't even know what day it is. Wednesday? It is Wednesday, February 12th, and I have just woken up in my new Airbnb in Paris, France. Let me just tell you guys, I slept last night on and off for about 13 or 14 hours. I mentioned in my last vlog that I hadn't really been sleeping well since I got here, and I don't know what happened, but it rained a lot yesterday, and when I got to this Airbnb, I decided to take a little nap around 3.30 p.m., and then I woke up at like 10.30, and at that point, I decided the best move was just to go back to sleep and sleep through the night. On the plus side, I feel very well rested, and on the very negative side, I'm, I slept through lunch and dinner, so I'm super hungry. Um, definitely gonna eat extra food today, and I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. There's a lot of stuff I want to show you. And I also want to give you a tour of this Airbnb because it is extremely unconventional and a little bit creepy. There are definitely elements of a horror movie, but it's very unique and, and quite interesting. So I want to show you that. It's so early. The sun is not even up yet. And I'm just kind of waiting for things to open so I can go out and get a proper meal. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to like shower, maybe make some tea, and maybe I can give you the tour. about 9 15 in the morning and i'm going to go out and get something to eat and i have decided to walk to a place that's not super close so i can just get out into the world and get some exercise which always makes me feel better no matter what so i'm going to take this opportunity since i woke up early and just do something that i know will make me feel good um by the way yes that is a braid attached to a stick we can talk about that later um, there's a lot of hair art in this apartment, you guys. There's a lot of hair art and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I want to wait to give you the full tour until there's a little bit more natural light because the space really is so beautiful, minus the hair.
I am now back in my Airbnb and I wanted to give you guys a tour while the lighting was really good. So I'm going to show you from the entrance what everything looks like. The place where I'm staying is actually a duplex and you kind of walk through a shared entrance to get down to, I guess the basement. That makes it sound kind of creepy, but. So walking in, you have the kitchen on the left-hand side and kind of a little coffee bar station over here. There's a lot of natural light, which I really love. You can see there are skylights everywhere. There's also one in the kitchen and it just feels, I don't know, very nice and comfortable. Although I will say the lighting in the kitchen at nighttime uh, or when it's dark out is a bit serial killer vibes. <laughs> During the day, it's quite nice. The owner of the house is an architect and there is a ton of art and just miscellaneous objects everywhere. And then walking over here is kind of the living room or workspace, I guess. There's this really amazing table. I would love to have a table like this in my house at some point. Just a multifunctional kind of area where you can eat and do work. This is where I've been working over here. Lots of things here and there. I'm pretty sure these are for sex. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. In France, maybe they're paperweights or something. I don't know. And then we have the hair. And I've noticed that there are a lot of hair art. The hair was definitely not uh, photographed in the Airbnb listing. What's up with that? The owner has since told me that it's not real. It feels kind of real. But we're going to go with it's not real and it's a wig. Okay. And this is the bathroom. This is the shower, which you guys already saw. And then over here, just the mirror. There's a lot of like miscellaneous beaded necklaces in here. And it kind of reminds me lightly of the movie Stigmata. Am I at risk? Here's another piece of art that is kind of creepy. <gasps> All right, so now we will go upstairs. This is the lofted area. First, there is a sitting slash dressing room. There's like a closet over there. And this, I'm pretty sure connects to the owner's house. And then in here is just the sleeping area. So it's just a mattress. It's a pretty small little room. And it overlooks the area downstairs. So still a lot of natural light. I really like sleeping in smaller spaces. It makes me feel kind of safe. Um, and of course, I made the bed right when I woke up because that's what I do at home when I wanna have a really good day. Take a couple minutes, make the bed. It makes you feel just more put together and good about yourself. Back in this sitting room area, um, you can also see the workspace down below or the living room, whatever you wanna call it. And I really like just how open this whole kind of floor plan is. It makes the space feel really big. I've also noticed that there are a lot of these little sweaters. Okay, walking back downstairs. Here's one final little look around the room. I think the space overall is really, really cool. It's also pretty close to public transportation and um, there's a lot of things you can walk to, although the area itself is not one that I'm super familiar with. Uh, but I did get a chance to explore this morning when I was walking to breakfast. If I could give this place one criticism, it would be that the bed is really not that comfortable. Even though I slept for a very long time last night, the quality of my sleep was not the best. Although it wasn't bad, but I did keep waking up, which was probably just because I was hungry and I was sleeping for so long. Another very real fact is that I don't sleep great by myself. Um, and there are a lot of reasons for this. There are some things that I've been debating on discussing on YouTube and I've kind of gone back and forth in my mind on whether or not I wanna talk about them. All right, it is now almost 2 p.m. and I'm waiting for one of my subscribers to come over so we can shoot ASMR and I'm really, really looking forward to it. To film any ASMR, I feel like I always have to be in a specific mood and I have to be having a good day because if I'm not feeling very positive and at peace myself, then it's really hard to 
project those feelings to my viewers, to you guys. So I only try to film ASMR when I'm in the right state of mind. And I'm feeling it right now. Okay, I will check back in with you in a little bit. Hello guys, it is several days later. This is quite possibly the worst angle I could be filming at. I am currently in a hotel room and I stayed here the last three nights. I only ended up staying the first night at my new Airbnb and I debated on whether or not I even wanted to talk about the fact that I got a hotel because it seemed like exorbitant and kind of like a reckless way to spend money but first of all this place was not expensive and I just didn't feel comfortable in my Airbnb. I just felt like I should splurge and get a hotel room. It is genuinely next door to the Airbnb that I'm staying at. Like I can walk back and forth between the two, which feels kind of weird, but this is it. It's very, very clean. This is the bathroom, the shower, hello. The neighborhood that I'm in, I will not lie, and I don't wanna offend anybody, but it's, it's not like a very nice area. It's a lower income neighborhood, but because Paris is so walkable, it's easy for me to walk to other areas. However, this street specifically is a little bit sketchy and at nighttime it gets pretty seedy. Uh, there are a lot of like bars and cool restaurants around here, but it's definitely not like maybe the safest area, but I also don't feel unsafe if that makes sense. I think Paris as a whole is, is quite safe as long as you're just aware of your surroundings. Um, but it's not like a ritzy part or a glamorous part or anything like that. I have really been pretty content at this hotel. Everyone who works here is super friendly and they're actually organizing a spot for me downstairs to do a little meetup with some subscribers, which is so nice. This is my last official full day in Paris. I'm leaving to head back to LA tomorrow and there have just been so many different emotions on this trip. I can't say it's been my favorite trip, but sometimes I feel with traveling, you don't really realize the growth and the experiences you had until you get back to your, your home, if that makes sense. Like sometimes when I travel, I'll in the moment feel depressed or anxious or isolated. And then when I get home, I feel a lot of growth from those experiences and I'm able to reflect on them in a totally different way. I don't know if any of you have experienced that as well, but I think that's probably pretty common with traveling. So I'm doing my meetup today at 11 a.m. So we'll check in with you guys a little bit later and there are a couple things I do wanna talk about before ending this video that are kind of connected to my last vlog and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a little bit. There's this uh, page uh, on Instagram called Influencers in the Wild. Oh, I don't know. Uh, people uh, who film like influencers on the streets. Oh, I do. I do. It's so funny. <laughs> back home from Paris and it feels so nice to be home. I cannot even express to you guys how good it feels to be back in my space with my babies. She's being extra affectionate. I wanted to say a few things, hopefully quickly. Ugh, I have like cat hair in my mouth. I wanted to thank you guys for all of the kind and supportive comments you left on my last vlog. It really meant so much to me and I read every single one of your comments. Um, I was pleasantly surprised at how encouraging and how positive they were. I don't typically open up about my relationship. It is something that I try to keep a bit more private. So when I chose to talk about some of the things that I'm going through, um, I already anticipated a lot of people making assumptions and just, you know, interpreting my relationship in a way that might not be accurate, uh, but I really appreciated how many people shared their own experiences and were just 
encouraging and uplifting. I know it's really easy to make assumptions about what someone might be going through. I know there was some of that as well and that's okay, uh, but I do think you can't really ever speculate about what's going on in someone else's life, especially when you're just seeing a very, very small piece of it on the internet. I do have a real life off of YouTube and even though I try to be as genuine as possible on my YouTube channel, my life off of the internet is significantly different than my online life simply because there's just a lot more depth and a lot more going on that I don't always talk about on here. Uh, but being abroad in Paris and just feeling like I had so much support, it really made me feel a great sense of comfort. I really empathize with anyone else who is experiencing any type of conflict or difficulties in their own relationship. I think that every relationship is going to have its ups and downs. I really think that people can work through even the most difficult challenges if if they choose to. I also, you know, I did read some comments that insinuated I was running away from my life back in LA, which is absolutely not the case. And that's a very uh, naive mentality because wherever you go, your problems are going to still be there unless you're taking time to work through them. Something else I didn't mention in my last video that I had planned on talking about only because I, I didn't want to just talk about negative thing after negative thing, but uh, I've been having a lot of trouble for a long time being at home by myself at night because we have had some security issues with our home in Los Angeles. Um, which has really pushed me to be this extremely paranoid person that I don't like. So one of the reasons I decided to go on that trip, aside from the fact that I love traveling, is because Nick was already going on a work trip and I was not super keen on being home by myself. Um, and I thought it was just a good opportunity to get out myself and explore. And I think I am at the point where I would like to seek therapy for this type of like paranoia. I mean if anyone out there has had experiences with like home break-ins or Anything like that. I'm sure you can deeply relate and as my channel continues to grow uh, There are definitely security concerns that I have and you know, I get messages too that are Threatening I get just negative messages from people which can be really disturbing so I always want to protect myself, but I also love meeting you guys and connecting with you guys uh, and I think there's so many amazing people in my audience, but of course there's always going to be um, weird people out there in the world and unfortunately when you have any type of platform where people are watching you, I think you have to deal with it a bit more. I don't really want to talk too much about that, but just know that this is something else I'm really struggling with and trying to work through on my own, but I'm feeling positive and I, I do feel like it's time to seek outside help <laughs> for this problem or just these intense thought patterns that I've developed as a result of not feeling completely safe. While I was in Paris, I did end up having an hour-long phone therapy session with the therapist that Nick and I see together. Yes, we go to therapy together, and I've talked about that in other videos. It felt so helpful and so beneficial, and it really helped me to kind of put the feelings aside so that I could try to enjoy the rest of my trip. I feel that I've come home with just much more clarity and desire to make things in my life work out. Um, I feel like I'm in the exact place that I'm meant to be in my life, in my relationship, with my YouTube career, and just everything. I feel like I'm exactly where I need to be and I'm just kind of figuring out everything as I go along and that's the best I can do and I need to be easy on myself through the process. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of your continued love and support. Um, and if you are going through a difficult time in your life with anything, I promise you that you will get through it. Even if it seems like you won't in the moment, um, you just have to keep pushing through those uncomfortable parts of life and you're gonna come out the other side.